I say results. Oh. Our results be directly associated with our level of faith. We're also told in the book of Ephesians chapter 3 that God is able to do more than we can think, ask, or imagine. Yes, and woke you up this morning, is able to do more than you can think, ask, or imagine. And I have an opening question this morning. Does anybody remember the answer to this question? Is there anything too hard for God? Is there anything too hard for God? The answer is and will always be absolutely no. There is nothing too hard for God. And today we get reference point that there's nothing too hard for God. He can do more than he can ask or imagine. I want to encourage somebody this morning out of a negative and declare to others God is getting ready to increase you from a place called nowhere. Okay, can you hit me well up here? It seems like it's a little choppy. Am I coming across to you? So say preach, preach, or preach. Preach, preach, or preach. Amen. You got a better reception than I have. We're going to work through this thing because I come to encourage somebody. You're going to come out of a place called nowhere into a place of increased growth. I'm going to ask the, the, the generation of change, uh, the chief wants to come and help me real quickly. They, they have a presentation real quickly to come and help me real quickly. Come on, come on, quickly, quickly, quickly. I pray they in order. I pray that Reverend Bell have them in the right order. What does that look like they're spelling? Make sure I can't see it. Come on, get in order, get in order, get in order, get in order. Get in order. Amen. What does that spell? Nowhere. Say it again. Let realize. What does that spell? Nowhere. Now take a snapshot of what you see right now. Take a take a snapshot either with your phone or take a middle snapshot. They're spelling the word nowhere because somebody showed this morning feeling like they're in a place called nowhere. The preacher has been preaching every Sunday, every Tuesday about increased growth, yet you've been showing up feeling like you're in a place called nowhere. So, so the young people came to show you what it looks like to be in a place called nowhere. They take an image of this, nowhere. And y'all take y'all seats, I'll bring y'all back at the end. Give God praise for our young people. Give God praise for our young people. Now it should be now in the book of Genesis chapter 17. Let's look at verse number 20. Genesis chapter 17. Let's look at verse number 20. I'm excited about what God is doing. And I'm more excited about what God is getting ready to drop into your spirit to take you to another place. You've been in a place of nowhere too long when God is declaring and desiring to take you to a place of increased growth. Somebody should have been snitching. I receive it. I grab it. I catch it. It's mine. In the book of Genesis, chapter 17, look at verse number 20. As for Ismael, I have heard you. I will surely bless him. I will make him fruitful and will greatly increase his numbers. He will be the father of 12 rulers and I will make him into a great nation. Now drop down to Genesis chapter 21, verse number 17. And thank you for remaining standing. Genesis chapter 21, verse number 17. 
the Bible says, God heard the boy crying, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What is the matter, Hagar? Do not be afraid. God has heard the boy crying as he lies there. Lift the boy up and take him by the hand, and I will make him a great nation. Verse 19, God then opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. So she went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. Verse 20, in conclusion, God was with the boy as he grew up. Take your seats and let's have a conversation of increased growth 2008. God is getting ready to take you from a place called nowhere to a place of increased growth. Let us just break down the text this morning. In the book of Genesis chapter 17 and chapter 21, the focus is Ismael. Somebody say Ismael. The focus is Ismael. So let me give you the backdrop of Ismael's life story just in case you're not familiar with who Ismael is. He's the son of Abraham and Abraham is the father of faith. So Ismael Ismael's daddy was a big shot. Ismael's daddy was a shot caller. But there's an issue. We will soon discover that no matter who his natural daddy was, Ismael was in a negative situation, a place called nowhere. The Bible says Ismael was born in a dysfunctional situation. He, he, he was the son of the other chick. Uh huh. Is Ismail was born in a dysfunctional situation? Maybe somebody here can relate to being born in dysfunction. You didn't choose who your family was. You didn't choose to be born in that kind of situation. You didn't choose to be born in a family with all that confusion and, and bitterness and fighting. That wasn't your choice. You were dropped into a dysfunctional situation. Maybe you see Ismail because he was unwanted by others. Can you imagine being a baby boy and your own daddy no longer? want to be connected to you. Ismael was now being mistreated and feeling unwanted. Has anybody ever made you feel unwanted in this place? Can you imagine? We're not talking about the world. We're talking about his own father made him feel unwanted. And then to make matters worse, he was being raised by a single mother with no support from his father. Can you imagine? Now, now watch this now. He knows who his daddy is, yet his daddy won't toss him the ball. He, he, he know who his dad is, yet his daddy won't take him to lunch. He know who his dad is, but his daddy won't come to daddy and donuts. They, have you ever been in a situation where you knew who you connected to, yet they didn't care about you? Come on, Pastor. Right. So All his right. classmates probably voted his male most likely to fail. Uh, yeah. Most likely to fail. Come on now. He was always unfairly compared to other people. You're not like so and so. So-and-so is smarter, so-and-so is cuter, so-and-so is wiser, so-and-so is doing so much better than you. Can you imagine that kind of atmosphere? To spend all your days being compared unfairly to somebody else? They made him feel, watch this, they made him feel like the black sheep of the family. Of what side you on? Are you praying for me or praying on me? So I would just trust God. So God tells Abram, I hear your prayers. See, side note, watch this. People. My God. Brother John, people will have you on spiritual Prozac. <laughs> with their hot and cold ways. If we put the chips on people, they'll have you thinking one day, you're Superman, Hercules. And the next day, you're nothing. Stop putting faith in people. See, see, see. I can denounce church hurt because I'm telling you, don't put your faith in me, nor the church. Put your faith in God, and God will deliver. God will bless. God will strengthen. God will empower. But when you put your faith in man, man will fail you. Yes, it will. Stop setting yourself up for failure. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. At the very best, they're doing the best they can, and they're still limited. Oh, with the God I serve, there are no limitations. Because God then says, "I will bless him." God says, "I will bless him." See, God.
God promised to bless Israel. Watch this. Catch this. And God tells Abraham, I'm going to bless Israel no matter what you do for him or don't do for him. Uh, you, you missed that right there. I'm grateful the blessings on my life are not based on how you handle me, how you treat me, or what you think of me. God tells Abraham, I'm going to bless Israel if you like it or not. God says, I'm going to do for Israel if you like it or not. Is there anybody here this morning and you glad God going to bless you in spite of who curse you? God said, I got the boy. If you got him or not, I got the boy. You feed him or not, I got the boy. You love him or not, I got the boy. You encourage him or not, I got the boy. In his body class, God got you. Yeah. I made myself a promise. In 2018, never chase people, but chase God. If I chase God, Blessings are start checking me. But if I chase people, there's something up your sleeve. See, people, no matter how much they love you, they can never love you above them. I'll help you to a certain extent. I'll coach you to a certain level. But if you start getting too close to my territory, my spotlight, God says, I'm going to bless them anyhow. Watch this. Watch this. God says, not only am I going to bless him, God says, I will make him fruitful. I will make him fruitful. No, 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 no. Watch this. I'm about to get, I'm about to go to the whole other level. I will make him fruitful. Jesus. I'm going to give you something. If you're strong enough to grab hold to it, mm. it'll bless you forever. Yeah, 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 yeah. I will make him fruitful. See, Ismail, like many others, was stuck in the spirit of abandonment. Okay. Yeah. Meaning he had become unproductive because he couldn't get over somebody disconnecting themselves from him. The church is filled with unproductive people who are stuck in the spirit of abandonment because somebody disconnected themselves from you and you put all your value in being with them. The Bible is clear. If I stay connected with Jesus and the word of God, I will be fruitful and bear much fruit. God never told me I had to stay with you to be great. God made Israel a promise. When Israel was so disappointed in his daddy, he didn't hear the promise. I, I wonder, I wonder this morning, I wonder how many are stuck in the spirit of abandonment. Because somebody disconnected themselves from you and you have put all your value in being with them so now you're unproductive hoping and praying they come back when God has said them being back is not what you need I will, I will. God said I'm going to make you food see never never watch this now baby mama you can lose baby mama drama if you listen <laughs> never, 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 ever, never. Wow. Never allow somebody disconnecting themselves from you to disconnect you from the power of God. Oh, uh, let me say, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't care, I don't, I don't care, I don't care how many tears you've shed. I don't care, I don't care if he told you from the preacher uh, that death do us part. I don't care if, 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 if he, he baby daddy number one, two, and three. Brother, I don't care if you gave up your home paycheck and she decided to go close. I'm telling you in 2018, don't live in the spirit of abandonment. Whoever don't want to roll with you, God's making room for the new because God is in. That was so last season. And don't be stuck on stupid. If they don't see the value in you, you better see the value in your normal. If they don't want you, you better want yourself. If 
see if you're okay. They will check on you to see if you cracked up yet. But you better tell them this morning, I haven't cracked up. I'm getting ready to blow up. I'm getting ready to grow up. I'm getting ready to grow up. Because God promised me he's going to make me fruitful in your faith. He says, I'm going to bless him. I'm going to make him fruitful. Yeah. You know he's talking to you, right? Yeah. And then, then God says, I'm going to text. I will increase greatly. Come on. I will increase greatly. It looks like he's in a place called nowhere. Yet God declares, I will increase him greatly. Ooh, I'm trying to, trying to keep my cool. Uh, See, watch this. In the year 2018, those who've been left behind, pushed out the door, mishandled by others, will discover their godly covenant of increased growth. And once you discover your covenant with God, you'll stop letting people minimize you, downsize you, and hold you back. See, once you discover the covenant is not with him, him or her, the covenant is with God. And once you recognize the godly covenant is with God, you'll see what God. I dare you to shift. I dare you to shift. It's time to shift positions. It's time to get ready to go farther and go faster. It's time to get out of park. Time to get out of first gear. It's time to go. It's time to shift. Down gear and shift. It's time to move. Somebody help move! Oh, I read the Bible numerous of times. I preached throughout the Bible for the last 25 years of my life. But I never noticed the butt right here until this week. See, as God was declaring what he's going to do in Ismael's life, Isaac shows up on the scene. Yeah. But, but notice this now. God tells Ismael, I'm going to do all that for you but I'm gonna bless Isaac too. Uh -huh. uh, you will miss that. See, 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 the problem is we don't understand how big God is. God can bless me and you at the same time. God's not limited to blessings. God can bless on the north, the south, the east, and the west at the same time. That's why I don't understand why is there jealousy in the body of Christ. God can bless this church, that church, and that church at the same time. God can bless your family, my family, and their family at the same time. When it's about God, there are no limitations. I'm going to bless. I'm going to bless you, Israel. But don't take your eyes off your blessings. Look at the blessings of Isaac. See, church, we get confused. And my God is blessing us. But look at what God is doing for somebody else. Their car a little faster. Their house a little bigger. Their church a little fancier. So we take our eyes off God. And then we get in the flesh. Then we get all confused. And we get in our feelings. And feelings will set you up for failure. So God tells Israel, yes, I'm going to bless you. But yes, I'm going to bless Isaac too. That's right. So, so, so God tells Ismael, I'll be ready to bless you. Come back, Trudy. Come back and give me my nowhere. Come back and just think, give me my nowhere. So, so God says to Ismael, I'm going to bless you. But, but, no, watch this, watch this. In Genesis 21, even though God has declared, I'm going to bless you, I'm going to increase you, I'm going to make you great, Ismael don't feel great. Come on. Okay, okay, okay. Have you, ever, have you ever knew that where you were were not where you belonged, but yet where you were were overpowering you at the moment? Okay, okay. In Genesis 21, Ismael and Hagar, his mother, 
but down and out. And maybe you feel like they felt, that they were stuck in a place called nowhere. While Isaac is being blessed, they're stuck in a place called nowhere. God already said, well bless you, I'm gonna increase you. God already said, I got you, but it don't feel like you got me, God. I, I, I know you two church can't tell the truth, but yeah. it would felt like God really didn't have you. Jesus. It would felt like you were all by yourself. On, Wife didn't understand. Preach, Husband didn't understand. Children didn't understand. Best friend didn't Nobody understood. You were in a place by yourself, and it looked like you were on the cross with Jesus. My God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? She was down and out. She was crying. 
crying. A boy was down. He was crying in a place called nowhere. N-O-W-H-E-R-E, -E, a place called nowhere. They looked hopeless. They looked defeated. They looked like they were losing in a place called nowhere. But remember, God already said, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to increase you. I'm going to make you great. Don't let fear cancel God's voice. Don't let fear cancel what God said. So God told her, God told her, God told her. Come here, Christy. God told her. Take your glasses off real quickly. God said, stop all that crying. Change your vision. She saw nothing. Place called nowhere. Yes. But when she changed her vision, uh -huh. when she changed her vision, Homeland uh -huh. needs you to shift to the right just a little bit. Shift. 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 Hold up high. Hold up high. Now, they went from nowhere to now there. They went from nowhere. When they shift their vision, when they shift their thoughts, when they shift their mind, they went from nowhere to now there. Now they're in joy, now they're in peace, now they're in prosperity, now they're in hope, now they're in joy. What looked look like nowhere when I shift my thoughts and got back in the word. I my vision and got back in the word. When I said yes to God, my nowhere became now there. Jesus, 